when we put it all together, we can actually create what's called a tree of life. And this tree of life in the olden times was really based on a system developed by the man Linnaeus. Linnaean system is really the one that's still used in, in many ways. And that Linnaean system is very popular because it's, it's easier to remember. And a lot of your teachers and my teachers learned it. And so we still use it. But in fact, it's probably about 20 years out of date. Uh, the more modern way to um, classify organisms is a field of study called cladistics. But because cladistics is a lot harder for students to understand, especially intro, uh, intro gen ed classes, we stick with the Linnaean system because it still provides us a, a way of understanding and classifying the kinds of life that we're most interested in, particularly in the ocean. So let's learn a little bit about that system. The Linnaean system relies upon dividing groups into their biggest categories, which are called kingdoms. The next set of groupings are called phylums. The classification beneath that is a class, then order, family, genus, and species. Now I've added domain here, which is a more recent kind of uh, grouping of organisms, and we'll talk about domains in just a second. If we were to take ourselves, for example, and classify us according to the Linnaean system, here's what we get. We belong to the domain Eukarya. We're in the kingdom Animalia, in the phylum Chordata, the class Mammalia, the order Primates, the family Hominidae, the genus Homo, and the species Sapiens. We're all Homo sapiens, and I'm sure you knew that. Can you name a, a chordate that's not a mammal? It'll be on the test. If we look at really from the smallest of organisms to the largest of, or of organisms, we can see the usefulness of this Linnaean system. Here is one of the smallest photosynthetic organisms on Earth, Prochlorococcus, and here's the largest organism on Earth, Balanoptera musculus, or you might know it as the blue whale. This Prochlorococcus, this little photosynthetic organism, single-celled, belongs to the kingdom Bacteria, phylum Cyanobacteria. It's a member of the class Plurochlorophytes, in the order Prochlorococcus, in the family Prochlorococcaceae, the genus Prochlorococcus, and the species Marinus. On the other hand, the blue whale is belongs to the kingdom Animalia, in the phylum Chordata. The class Mammalia, again, just like us, but its order is different. Here, its order is Cetacea. Our order is Homodidinae. It belongs to the family Balanidae, and its genus is Balanoptera, and its species is Musculus. So this may seem like, you know, a lot of unnecessary detail, but in fact, it helps you understand that all life can be grouped in ever finer categories and, and all, each one of those categories have some relationship to each other. One of the things that's interesting about classification is that you do it all the time. When you sort clothes after laundry, you put your underwear in your underwear drawer, your socks in your socks drawer, your shirts in your shirt drawers, and so on and so on. And even if you're interested in certain hobbies, like maybe baseball or cars or coins or something, you're classifying different kinds of things into groups. And it's this classification that helps us develop an appreciation for the kinds of things that we're interested in. But in this case, it helps us develop an appreciation for life itself. When you go down to the seashore, having an understanding of the relationships between organisms, who's related to who, it lets you appreciate what that organism is doing, where it came from, and what kind of role it might play in the ecosystem of that particular marine environment. So classification can be fun as well as having a lot of details to it.